Well, hi again, everyone. I'm Bill Sheridan with the Maryland Association of CPAs. And we all know that things are changing rapidly in the workplace these days, and CPA firms are certainly no exception. Uh, firm leaders of today are, are edging toward retirement, and younger folks are lining up to take their place. So the question becomes, how does that change the game for CPA firms going forward? Well, I've got a case study for you. Her name is Jody Paydar, and she recently took over her dad's firm in Illinois and completely retooled it with a focus toward things like software as a service and cloud computing, uh, mobile technologies, value billing. In short, she's built her version of the firm of the future, and she has some very specific ideas about what CPA firms need to be doing now to ensure their relevance going forward. I spoke with Jody about all this recently, and I want to share a conversation with you. A quick word of warning, this, this conversation took place between sessions at a conference that the two of us were attending, and uh, so there's a lot of background noise in there, but if you can bear with all that, I think you'll hear some pretty interesting ideas. Here's Jody. Hi, so I'm Jody Paydar, and I'm a CPA. I'm CEO and principal of the New Vision CPA Group, and we actually just recently rebranded. We used to be James J. Matusik CPA LTD, but we've just gone through rebranding as of September, and now we're New Vision CPA Group. So tell me a little bit about that story, about the rebranding of the firm and, and how that all came about. So about five years ago, I joined my dad's firm, and it was James J. Matusik, CPA, LTD. And at that point, um, we had talked about changing the name, but it, it really didn't seem to be that important to me. So we said, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll go with James J. and we'll, we'll move forward. And in the last year and a half, I really realized how important it was to have a name match who we were and what would fit, as opposed to just having uh, a, a name of a person who is essentially retiring. And um, and I didn't want it to be Paydar. I, di I didn't want it to be the Paydar group because I could have named it the Paydar group. But I did. I wanted to be to be a little bit further away from me as a person, so that it would truly be a firm and not the Jody Paydar CPA. And so anyway, so we went through the process of rebearing rebranding and we came up with the name New Vision CPA Group because I really believe that we have a new vision for a CPA firm or a group of CPAs. Mm -hmm. So now this is kind of, uh, you've taken over the firm from your, your dad in, in, in essence. Tell me a little bit about you know the biggest challenge that you've come across as far as creating that, that next generation CPA firm. So. Um, first of all, my dad's great, and we really get along, and he really respects me as a partner, which I think is so huge because he really doesn't treat me, uh, he treats me as his peer. Um, and I and I had 10 years of previous experience before I even went into business with my dad, so it's not like I learned everything I knew from my dad. When I came in and I joined my dad, I was already standing on my own two feet. Um, but it's a family business, and there are issues there. Um, but realistically, what my dad has done is he's allowed me to make mistakes. And you really have to. You have to be able to, as a senior partner, give up some of that control and let the next generation learn and make mistakes. Because you know what? You made those mistakes when you were starting out. So, and that's the only way you learn. And it's not so much making the mistake, it's being able to get up and come back from that mistake and redirect. Because that's what makes a true leader, is being able to rebound and go forward. So um, some of the challenges have just been um, just getting to be used to um, working with my dad. And I think um, just dealing with, I'll just say, uh, what happens in the office stays in the office. and. <laughs> You know, we may get into it, but at the end of the day, we're still, you know, he's my dad, and that's just it. Um, he's been really good, though, with giving me a lot of freedom. Now, we actually have a three-year plan, um, and we didn't come up with that three-year plan until uh, actually we're in year two. So we were working together for two years before we finally said, okay, we're ready to make a plan, and there's actually going to be a succession plan of three. It's going to be a three-year plan, and we're in year two. And at the end of last year, um, year one, we had a meeting and we sat down and I said, okay, Dad, you got to let go a little bit more. 
and so that we're hoping that by the end of year three, he's always going to be around, and that's fine. But we just don't want all that. I, I don't want all that responsibility on his shoulders. I want him to be able to enjoy it and retire and just come to work. But the funny thing is, is as our firm is growing and it's back in growth mode, mm -hmm. he is so energized. He's at work late because he loves it, because he sees the growth, and he's like, this is cool, and this is working. And um, I think it's really actually revitalized him into wanting to be something or wanting to be part of something bigger. So. What are some of the things that, that you're doing differently um, uh, from the way that they used to be done when, you're, when your dad was in charge of the firm? What, I mean, what does is, what is a next generation firm like yours look like? What are you doing that, that's a little bit different? Okay, so first of all, we're SaaS-based. So every software we use is hosted in the clouds. We don't have a network. I don't deal with any of those IT issues. Everything we do is through a subscription basis through various companies. So we use Intuit, we use Thompson, you know, all the big players, but everything is SaaS-based. The second thing is we're very mobile. And it wasn't until recently that we actually moved in and all sat in the same space. Prior to that, my dad had his own space, and I co office with another CPA. And um, my mom, who would assemble tax returns, assembled at home. So we were all in different places. And recently, I, we had the opportunity to move, and so we did. But now is the only time that we're actually physically all together. So we really, truly are a remote f workforce, and it works because we're on a SaaS firm. Because we don't worry about IT. We don't worry about a VPN. Um, that's Thompson's problem. That's Intuit's problem. That's not our problem. So um, we're SaaS based. We value bill everything. That means when a client comes into our firm, we set a price, and that's it. No more. No, no more. more time no sheets, less. No, no more billable Well, hours. we keep track of time mm -hmm. because I think you need to keep track of time to see what clients are taking and and everything else. But we don't bill time. So if it takes uh, if it takes someone ten hours to do something, or it takes them two, they're still charged the exact same fee. And I think. What I've really learned is is that those phone calls that you're talking with your client are really marketing calls. They shouldn't be billed for. And it always bothered me that, um, you know, it's like when you, when you charge someone for a call, phone call, you're really telling them, don't call me. And we really are trying to, we, we are proactive instead of reactive. And so our clients are communicating with us all the time, and we're really able to help them with their business as opposed to giving them a deliverable such as a financial statement or a tax return. Because you know what? They don't want that. They have to pay for it because the government requires them to, to have it. But they don't want that. They want us. They want our business expertise. They want our value. They want just someone to bounce something off of. A lot of times are, are, they're small business owners and they just want to say, hey, what do you think about this or, or where's this going? And they just want someone, and I don't want to say just to talk to, but they want someone at a managerial level who they can actually communicate with because our businesses are really in the 1 to 10 million mark mm -hmm. and they don't have controllers. Usually they have an office manager and they usually don't have this executive team to help them make decisions. We're the ones who are actually communicating with them and helping them make decisions. Okay. Um, you mentioned a, a couple of minutes ago uh, the growth that you guys have experienced in the last few years. Tell me a little bit about that. How has the firm grown since uh, all these changes have happened? So, I would say, well, it, it um, now my dad's firm was a, initially a part-time firm because he had had significant experience in industry, and so we went from a $75,000 gross to over $300,000 gross in the last three in the last three years, and that was during the recession. So you tell me who's doing it right. <laughs> so we're and we've had so much growth now too. We're hiring people and. It's fun, but I have to tell you, we are going through growing pains as well because we're trying to figure it all out and move forward. But we'll get there, and I'm not worried about it. What does the firm of the future look like to you? So I think the firm of the future is not the firm of today, the firm of what I grew up in or the firm that I learned from. Um, I think it's going to be definitely um, more like a corporation or um, with one central leader because the firm partners don't work because partners, um, they're so concerned about how they do things. No one, when you're in a partnership, no one's on the same page. And I would say, I'm sure there's a couple exceptions to that rule, but in the three different partnerships where I worked, no one was on the same page. And 
Staff don't like that. They want to know what their responsibilities are, how to do things. Everything needs to be standardized for you to be productive and to be efficient. I mean, that's that's where it needs to be. And, you know, if a partner gets mad at you because you did it in red pen, now granted that's going back as opposed to now things are digital, but if a partner gets mad at you because you did it in red pen and not in blue pen and you're getting dinged on that, guess what? Nobody wants to work in that environment. And you know what? They don't have to now. And there used to be a lot of barriers to entry, but those barriers are gone because realistically, you get a few years of experience, you can now start a SaaS firm where you're going to pay monthly. So you don't even need the capital outflow. The healthcare bill, now everyone's going to be eligible for health care. So you don't even have that health care issue. And there's young people who want to. Inter- inter- independence and have kind of more of an entrepreneurial spirit where they're not afraid and money's not everything everyone says oh well you know we'll give them money or whatever but you know what money's not important to the next generation and it actually it's not important to a lot of people in the gen x generation as as well i mean yes i need to make money and yes i i want to have things but you know what i want to be happy and i want to do something that's that makes me happy and that I want to go to work every day. And I don't think the old firm model breeds that. It, all it does is make people angry and that's why they leave or they go to corporate. Why do you think people leave to corporate? And just think, if you could take a public accounting firm and make it like a corporate entity, don't you think people would stay? Why do you think everybody goes to corporate? It's a lifestyle. It has nothing to do with the work. The work in corporate is certainly not as cha- well. I shouldn't say that because I don't know who's watching. But the work in corporate, it, it doesn't have all the variety, I think, that the work in public has. But it's not the variety of work. It's the lifestyle, and that's what people want, and that's why they leave public. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, anything that you'd do differently looking back on, on the last few years? Um, I think that I would have... Um, I don't know. I, that's a hard question for me because I'm sure there are things that I've learned from yeah. that I would like to change. Um, but, okay, so it's a long story. So hopefully you got some time here. But I office, so the first thing when I um, joined my dad, my dad said, go find your own clients. And I officed with uh, a CPA across, the, like in town, but across the street. And uh, it just so happens uh he recently died and when he died um i put in a bid to purchase this for him i didn't get it whatever but that, but that's aside from the story but i left him and i really went full force on my own i think i probably waited too long to i i, I spent too much time helping him mm-hmm. when i should have like bit the bullet a little bit earlier and said okay um i'm gonna do this gung-ho as opposed to doing more contract work for him. Right. And so now looking back at it, it's very easy to see that I, I kind of spent too much time there. But on the flip side of that, I learned a lot because I it was one more firm that I got to be a part of to see how not to do things. And that's, I mean, I mean for as much as you know how to do things, you really got to know how not to do things to know that you're doing things right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A lot of uh, traditional firms, I'm, I'm gathering, might be a little uncomfortable with dealing some of, with some of this stuff, um, some of these notions that you're putting forward. What, what are uh, you know, maybe the top few things that, that firms might need to do now um, to stay on top of all this stuff and kind of really prepare themselves for that evolution to what, where firms are going to be going? Well, what amazes me is how many firms are out there that don't even go to CPE. All they do is whine and complain about how they have to get their 40 hours in. And I, I find that amazing because I always have so much CPE, I don't even know what to do with it. And I'm a teacher, so I'm, I'm into learning, but I think they really need to get on board with the fact that, you know what, accounting has changed in the last 30 years, and they need to be learning to keep up with it. And they need to invest in that learning culture with their staff because, you know what, that's what makes you like your job because otherwise it's so repetitive. I mean, yeah, we got to do bank recs and we got to do tax returns, but it isn't until you really get how to, like, do tax research and to find things out on your own that makes you 
a true professional. And I think that a lot of firms don't give their staff the opportunity to really get that detail. I mean, from a tax perspective, every first year or I should say every you know young staff person should be required to take a master's level level tax research course. Why does nobody teach us research at that level? We should. It just should be a no-brainer. And yet, and and whether it be CPE at an all-day conference or CPA through a master's program, why is it firms are afraid to invest in education of their staff? And you know what? Even if you make a contract with them so that they don't leave or whatever, but you know what? That's investing in your future. If you're not going to put the money out to say, hey, I value you and I really want you to learn because you're going to be more productive in our firm, then you know what? Guess what? I don't want to work for you. I, 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 you know what? You don't want to invest in my development, then you know what? I'll go do it somewhere else and I'll learn it somewhere else. Were you and Mark Cozil's, um presentation earlier today he had a no, great um, analogy with that he, he said you know there are a lot of firms that he's talked to who, who say you know what what if I train my people and they leave and he flips that around and says well what if you don't train your people and they stay you know you're just right. kind of inviting mediocrity into into yeah. your organization and do you know my firm so my the, the firm that I was with prior I got a master's in tax do you know not one partner said to me congratulations when I graduated oh, not God. one partner <laughs> okay so I had been working through it for a number of years it was five years so it took me a while but I got through it and at the end that one, not one partner said, hey, congratulations. How about, hey, here's 100 bucks. Go out to dinner. Whatever. You know what? Guess what? I'm not there anymore. So, and, and it isn't always the money. It's just the recognition to say, hey, I see you've gone through this. Congratulations. Stand up at a meeting and say, Jody finally finished her master's. Or just it's the little stuff that we want it's the recognition it's not about the money and we're a different generation and yes we need to eat we need to pay our rent but that's not what motivates us well, Jody Paynar thank you so much for taking the time I appreciate it okay